You're watching the Business English webinar series brought to you by Human English. You can find podcasts and videos of these lectures online at humanenglish.com. Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Today's webinar is Socializing Networking in English. And this is the first of a two-part series on socializing. It's going to be about networking and making contacts. Okay, my name is Monica, and I come from America. I am from Philadelphia. It is a city on the northeast of the United States, 90 miles from New York. But at the moment, I'm living and working in Milan, Italy, as an English teacher. Okay, so if you're interested in any courses, you can visit our website or write our email, which will, I will show you at the end of the webinar. Okay, so let's go on today to socializing in English. Socializing in English, making contacts, is a very important skill because you need to socialize in English often before a meeting or after a meeting, maybe before dinner or a lunch with colleagues or business associates, or maybe to greet some visitors who are coming to your country or your country, uh, to your country or to your company. Okay, so can you write in the chat box, where do you have to speak English related to work? So are there any occasions where you need to speak English, um, whether it be at work or outside work? Maybe you can write that in the chat box. Okay, Klaus uses English in the office. Okay, also at phone, on phone, right? Colette is for studying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so there's different times we need English. Could be for study, could be for work. On Klaus, okay, Klaus really uses English a lot. He also uses it on business trips. Okay, so there's various times when you may need to use English, and sometimes it is socializing. Okay, these are some examples. When you have to meet people at airports and train stations, maybe visitors coming to your company, interact in restaurants and bars, welcoming visitors, entertaining visitors to your country or company, planning future contact, doing business informally, talking to people before and after meetings, chatting to people at conferences or trade fairs, visiting people's homes, telling stories, anecdotes or jokes. An anecdote is a is like in a personal story about something that has happened to you and engaging in small talk. Small talk is key, okay? And if you can remember from one of our webinar, webinars previously, I explained to you that small talk is informal conversation which you usually have before a meeting or a presentation at work just to break the ice and get to know your colleagues and business associates. It's a good way to start off when you meet somebody. Okay? Okay, so let's take a look at the summary of today's webinar. We're going to be looking at welcoming visitors and exchanging contact details. Discourse, how to keep the conversation going. And the language of requesting, declining requests, developing an informal conversation and exchanging information. We'll also be looking at planning future contact and saying goodbye. We're going to be examining informal language and compare it to the, to the written language. So we're going to be examining spoken language and written language because it's a little bit different. Okay, so we're going to learn how to different ways to say hello, what we say in between, and then finally saying goodbye. Okay. Now, I'm going to dictate a few words and expressions to you. So you can just listen and see if you can remember any words or expressions that I dictate, and you can write it in the chat box. Okay. So you can just listen and then write any words or expressions you hear. Rapport. Rapport. Establish rapport, establish rapport, 
nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I don't think we've met. I don't think we've met. Nice weather in Bilbao. Nice weather in Bilbao. Host. Host. Guest. Guest. Turn taking. Turn taking. Okay, so that's very good. I see some uh, words that you've written down. Okay, uh, nice to meet you. I don't think we have met. Guest. Okay. Okay, also Olga has written some words down. All right. Okay, and Coletta. Okay, that's very good. I see that you've gotten some of the words. There may be one difficult one, and that was the last one, turn taking. So let's look here on the slide and we can see the words. Okay. Okay, there's also a new attendee, Gunther. Okay, so welcome to today's webinar. And as, you, as I told the other attendees, today's webinar is about networking and socializing. Okay. And to answer George's question, I will, I will explain at the end of the webinar about the slides. Okay, so at the end of the webinar today, I'll explain about receiving slides. Okay, um, so I see that most of you wrote a lot of different um, words down, and let's take a look at them now. The first one is rapport. Okay, the pronunciation is rapport. We do not pronounce the T. Rapport is the relationship of mutual understanding or trust between people. So it means trust and understanding between two people. Okay, and it's important in a workplace to establish rapport. It means to develop the relationship between two people. Okay, so you need a good rapport with your colleagues, a good relationship. Okay, nice to meet you. We usually use when we meet somebody for the first time. But there is another way to say nice to meet you. Okay, does anybody know the other way to say nice to meet you? when you meet somebody for the first time? Okay, well, Olga asked the question when you meet somebody for the first time, how do you do? Okay, so you could say, how do you do? Nice to meet you. But we can also use another word for nice and we say, please. Pleased to meet you, for example. Okay. Okay, pleased to meet you is also. Okay. Um, then we can ask, uh, if, we, if we're not sure if we met the person, I don't think we've met. Sometimes you bring up the weather, nice weather in Bilbao. Okay. And then we have the words of host and guest. Okay. A host is the one who receives or entertains the, the visitors in a social situation at work or at home. So the host will be the person who receives the visitors. The guest is the visitor. Okay, the guest is the one who is receiving hospitality at home or in a restaurant or is the visitor at the office or in the country. And then finally, we have turn taking. And turn taking are the rules how to construct conversation. Okay, it's the rules about how to construct conversation. You need to take turns when speaking. Okay, so you can't always speak only you. You need to take turns and allow also the other person to speak. Okay, so I'm just going to read now a text. And you're just going to listen to the text. And it's going to be about socializing. Okay, so just listen. Socializing is an important skill in business. This is because a lot of business is done at conferences, in restaurants, at airports, before and after meetings. 
It is often vital to establish and maintain good rapport with clients and colleagues. However, socializing in English is not easy and can make people feel nervous. Okay, so here we can see the text. Okay, socializing is an important skill in business. This is because a lot of business is done at conferences, in restaurants, at airports, before and after meetings, etc. It is often vital to establish and maintain good rapport with clients and colleagues. However, socializing in English is not easy and can make people feel nervous. Okay. So again, you have to try to build rapport, build a good relationship with your clients and colleagues. Now, do you ever feel nervous in any situation when you speak English? Okay, do you feel nervous? You can just write yes or no. Are there any situations during your work day that you may feel nervous? Okay, many of us can feel nervous if English is not your first language, okay? And um, I think that a lot of people, especially in meetings or on the phone, you can feel nervous because uh, you can't see the person. It's much easier when you can see the person, okay? So there are a lot of different reasons why you could feel nervous, okay? Of course, English is maybe not your first language, but there could be reasons why you could feel nervous in any speaking situation, okay? So you could feel nervous in English, but you can also feel nervous in your own language, okay? And there are different reasons. So the first one is informal in spoken English is very different from the type of language most people have studied, and they have had little or no help with this, okay? A lot of times the English that we speak is different from what you may have studied in the grammar books, okay, because there are a lot of slang and expressions in the English language. There are also different rules and vocabulary choices made in real-time social interactions. Listening is a skill which is especially important in socializing, okay, so it's important to always listen to the other person to understand what they are saying. Native, native speakers of English seem to speak very fast, okay? So the native speaker of English seems to speak very fast. So this could also create some difficulties. Different accents cause problems. Okay, we have a lot of different accents, and this can cause problems. Okay. Um... The pressure to perform well is much stronger when you're speaking to colleagues or clients in real time, okay? So sometimes there is some pressure um, to perform very well when you're speaking to your colleagues or clients, and that can also make some reasons to make it you feel nervous, okay? Speakers need to be aware of the cultural rules. Okay, there are different cultural rules that you need to follow, and it is difficult to keep the conversation going. Okay, so there are various reasons why you may feel nervous um, when speaking, and of course speaking in another language. Okay, we're going to look now at a script of an informal conversation when two people are meeting for the first time. Okay, so let's just look at this when two people are meeting for the first time. Okay, hi, I'm Raquel Silva. Hello, my name's Tony Morris. We spoke on the phone yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, nice to meet you. You too. Nice um, offices. Hmm, nice offices you have here, don't you? A bit over the top, though, these chairs. But can't grumble, works for me. Park yourself here, I'll just be a tick. Okay, if you look at this conversation, this is quite different from formal language. So you can see two people speaking, Ra Raquel and Tony, 
and it's very informal. Okay, it's an informal conversation. Okay, and it's quite different from a written language. The first thing we can notice is there are some expressions and maybe some new words. So let's take a look at the words. We have the word grumble, but can't grumble. Okay. Does anybody know the meaning of grumble? Grumble is another way to say complain. Okay, I can't grumble or I can't complain. Okay, so grumble means complain. We also have the word, I'll just be a tick. I'll just be a tick. Okay, and this, if you know the meaning, you can type it in the chat box. If you look at the context, you may be able to figure it out. It says, works for me, park yourself here, I'll just be a tick. Okay, I'll just be a tick, I'll just be a moment. I'll just be an instant. Okay, so we have the word grumble, which means complain. I'll just be a tick, I'll just be a minute. And we even have another expression in the last sentence, a bit over the top. Something is over the top. The offices are over the top. Okay, this is an idiomatic expression, and it means extravagant, outrageous, exaggerated, something really, really big, extravagant. Okay, so you can see this is very different from written language, yet unfortunately spoken language is given very little attention on most language courses. Okay, so if you watch movies in English, you can see a lot of slang and idiomatic expressions and it's quite different from the written language that you may see in books, okay? And that's why it seems to be more difficult. Also, it is not incorrect in any way. Spoken language simply follows a different set of rules. Realizing this will help prepare you for real-time, face-to-face social interaction. Okay, so it's not incorrect to use the informal language of spoken language. And that will help you when you have a face-to-face -face conversation. So let's look at some of the rules of the spoken language. Okay, first of all, informal language is often used in spoken language, hi, rather than hello. Hello, my name's Tony Morris. We spoke on the phone yesterday, wasn't it? So we often use contracted forms when we are speaking. I'm rather than I am. Okay. All right. We also often systematically drop parts of the sentence. This is known as ellipsis. Okay. We use this because it is either unnecessary to use the complete element or we can work out the sense from the context. Okay. So we drop parts of the sentence. Okay. We often reformulate what we have said. Nice offices. Nice offices you have here, don't you? Okay, this is known as a repair strategy. We use tag questions at the end. A tag question is, don't you? We often use that at the end of a sentence when we talk informally. And it's also a feature of turn taking. Because now it will be the next person's turn to speak. And as you can see, we have some of the idioms that we looked at. We use idiomatic expressions. Over the top. Over the top means extravagant. Here is another one. Park yourself. Okay. Park yourself here. Park is usually referring to driving when you park. But in this case, it just means wait here a minute. I'll, I'll just be a tick. I'll just be a moment. And we also see a multi-word verb, a phrasal verb, get on with. And we can get on with it. Okay, let's get on with the lesson. Let's get on with the meeting. Get on with is a phrasal verb, means let's continue. 
Okay, and finally, the sentence is not the main unit of grammar. We tend to use phrases. Okay, we don't make complete sentences. We often use phrases. Nice offices. Nice offices you have here. Okay, so as we can see, we use a lot of different rules in the spoken language. We tend to use idioms, contractions, and more informal language. Okay, now we're going to look at a greeting between people and some expressions that we can use when you greet people, okay, when you meet them for the first time and you want to greet them. Okay, so let's take a look. Hi, hello, I don't think we've met. My name's Monica, for example. Hello, hi, I'm Tony. Nice to meet you, or we can say pleased to meet you. You too. Okay, here we have an answer, fine. So what would be the question here? What would be the question for this answer? There are, there are really two ways to, to say this question. Okay, right, that's very good. Okay, Olga, how do you do? And there is another way to formulate the question, how are you? Okay, so we can say, how are you or how do you do? Both ways are correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we have an answer, good, whether okay in Germany? So what would be the first part of this question, do you think? The answer would be good, weather okay in Germany? What might be a question for that? Okay, they're talking about the weather. So a question could be, how's the weather? For example, how's the weather in Italy? Good. Weather okay in Germany? Okay, this is an informal way of asking questions about the weather. Okay, yes, really nice. Okay, anyway, welcome to my company or welcome to America. Depends also could be welcome to a company or to your country. Okay, and here we have two parts of a question. Not very good. Okay, and then the answer is sorry to hear that. Was the plane late? Bad weather. Okay, so does anybody know a question that could go with the first part? Not very good. Okay, so you're talking about here, the answer is, was the plane late? Bad weather. So it's probably referring to the journey, not very good. Okay, so we may ask the question. Okay, right, well, I'll guess, it, in, is it a hurricane here? Right, okay. So it could be related to the weather, right, or the journey, or, or the flight, okay, it could also be the flight. How was your flight, or how was your journey? Not very good. Sorry to hear that, okay, sorry to hear that. What's the plane lead? Bad weather, okay. And yes, the usual rain, okay. So these are a lot of different ways when you first meet somebody to greet them. Usually you're going to be talking about the weather, their journey, um, welcome, welcoming them to the company. Okay, so when you meet for the first time, 
what questions would you ask visitors? So maybe write down one question that you may ask a visitor who has just arrived in your country or in your company. A visitor coming could be a client or a colleague. What would be a question that you may ask them? Okay. Well, when you meet people for the first time, you often want to ask them different questions, perhaps about their journey or about the weather. Let's take a look here. How did you get here? Okay. How was your flight? Okay. Maybe you meet them at the airport or you, they've just arrived in your company. How did you get here? How was your flight? Did you have any problems finding us? Did you have a good journey? And what was the weather like in London? Okay, so you can see here there's the general type of questions are about the journey, the flight, and perhaps the weather. Okay, that's just a good way to start off when you meet a visitor who's coming to your company or to your country. Okay, also is this your first visit to our city? Okay, now there could be other questions that the host asks the guest. Okay, if you are the host, you may ask your guest some other questions. Okay, let's look at some topics. We could ask about the visitor's journey, as we've seen in the weather, sports, about their jobs, holidays, the town, the place they are in, other towns, cities, or countries, their salaries, politics, and work or job in general. Okay, so all of these topics are okay, but there are two topics that may not be appropriate. Two topics that are not really appropriate to talk about when you meet people for the first time or you meet your colleagues or business associates. Okay. Which two topics do you think they could be? You can just write that in the chat box. Which two topics do you think may not be appropriate? Okay. Right. Okay. Excellent, Olga. Salary and politics. Okay. Yes. Usually if you're meeting people for the first time, business associates or colleagues, you don't want to talk about salary and politics. Okay. That's a little bit personal. Okay, but all the other topics are good topics to make questions and answer with your colleagues or with business associates or clients. Okay, so let's take a look at some answers to some questions. Okay, the first one is to discuss the launch of our new fragrance. To discuss the launch of our new fragrance. Okay, I'm going to show you the different answers, and then we will try to find the correct question. The hotel is excellent and has a full breakfast. It was fine, but a little, but a bit turbulent. It was cool and rainy in London. Yes, it is. I only know Rome. No, none at all. Your directions were fine. I have an appointment with Mr. Ferrari. Okay, now let's look at the first question. And if you can just write in the chat box the, the answer, the number of the answer that goes along with this. Okay, the question is, how have you found the Excelsior? Which answer do you think that would be? Okay, how have you found the Excelsior? Okay, um, 
Right. Excellent, Olga. Okay, maybe you didn't catch that one because of the word Excelsior. That's the name of the hotel. Okay, so that could have maybe been a little bit difficult. But how have you found the Excelsior would be number two. The hotel is excellent and has a full breakfast. Okay. How was the flight? Okay, which number of question would that one go with? How was the flight? Okay, good. Number three, it was fine but a bit turbulent. Okay, it was fine but a bit turbulent. Okay, turbulent means that it was a bit shaky, was not exactly smooth. Okay, next one. Any problems finding us? Any problems finding us? Okay, if you want to answer, you can go into the chat box. Just type in the number of the answer. Okay, you can find that in the chat box. You can just type in the answer. Any problems finding us? Right, Olga, number six. No, none at all. Your directions were fine. Okay. Is this your first time in Milan? Is this your first time in Milan? Okay, yes, right, number five. Yes, it is. I only know Rome. Okay. The next one is, who would you like to see first? Who would you like to see first? Okay, right. Okay, that's very good, Olga. Olga's getting them all correct. Who would you like to see first? Um, number seven, I have an appointment with Mr. Ferrari. Okay. This is an important question. Can I ask why you're here? Can I ask why you're here? Okay, this is usually asked by the receptionist, or the secretary in the office. Can I ask why you're here? Mm -hmm. Very good. So discuss the launch of our new fragrance. Okay. And finally, suppose the weather was bad. Suppose the weather was bad. Okay. So which one would that be? Suppose the weather is bad. Well, there's really just one answer left, and we can see that it would go together with, question, with um, the answer with number four. It was cool and rainy in London. Right, excellent. Okay, very good, Olga. Okay, so as you can see, these are different questions that you want to use when you meet people for the first time. Okay, um, there are questions about the flight about directions, okay, there's also questions about perhaps the hotel where you may be staying, and also the reason or purpose for your visit, okay, and this is a good way to start off a conversation when meeting people for the first time, to get to know them, and to make them feel comfortable, okay. Now, it's also important to keep the conversation going. Okay, after the small talk, you have to continue and keep the conversation going. You may go to a restaurant for lunch, or um, you may have some time for some small talk and conversation before the meeting begins. So you want to keep it going. Let's look at a conversation here, and just listen as I read the conversation. And at the end, write down in the chat box, do you think it's a natural conversation? Do you think that this will be a natural conversation between two people? Okay, but first just listen to the conversation. Who do you work for? I work for Michelin. Is it a French company? Yes, it is. Where is it based? 
It's based in Clermont-Ferrand in France. What does the company do? Michelin makes tires and sells them all over the world. How many employees does the company have? About 120,000. Where do you live? I live in a village about three kilometers from Clermont Ferrand. Are you married? Yes, I am, and I have two sons. Can I have your email address? Sure, it's pierre-eon at michelin.co.fr. Okay, do you think that this is a natural conversation, a natural dialogue between two people? Is this a natural dialogue? You can just write in the chat box yes or no. What do you think? Right. Okay. That's very good. Okay. Olga answered not at all. Okay. So this is not really a natural dialogue. There are many good questions, and the answers are very good and correct and clear, but they are set answers. They are rehearsed. Okay. This is not the usual way when we have two people talking naturally in a conversation. Okay. When we have two people talking naturally in a conversation, we can compare now and see the difference. Okay, so let's take a look at a more natural conversation between two people when they are talking. So, it was Michelin you said you work for. That's right, we're based in Clermont-Ferrand, but I work in Nantes, which is on the other side of the country. I live about three kilometers from the city center. My nice little village, and yourself? I'm with Reckless Motor Corps myself. Tires, right? That's what you're in. Yep, tires. We sell them all over the world and have about 120,000 people working for us. And we're looking at partnering with major motor companies, like yourselves, as a matter of fact. That's why I'm here at the conference. Oh, great. Any chance of, of having your email address then? Sure. Got a pen handy? Good. It's pierre-eon at michelin.co.fr. Got that? Make sure we catch up later before the end. Love to arrange a meeting. Okay. So you can see it's much different than the previous conversation. Okay. And this demonstrates that language you choose to use depends on the context. So. In a more formal situation, you're going to have longer sentences, okay? And this is a, an example of turn taking, okay? It's longer natural answers, there's some slang, and there's a lot of pauses between the words, okay? This is a much more natural conversation. And when answers are more natural, it makes it more interesting. Okay, if we look at the last answer, okay, sure, got a pen handy. We see the word handy, okay. Does anybody know the word, the meaning of the word handy? Okay, so if you want to get somebody's email address, you may want to take it down, make a note of it by pen, and you can ask, got a pen handy? Okay, handy means available. Do you have a pen available? Do you have a pen nearby that I can use? Okay, it's a little bit of a slang, a slang way of saying available. Okay, so once again, you can see that in a real conversation, we have longer natural answers we have more pauses, and we use a little bit of slang, okay? Another slang is instead of saying yes, we use yep, okay? And this can sometimes make it difficult because native speakers may use this type of slang when speaking, okay? When you meet people for the first time, you may want to ask for a business card. It's important and a good idea to exchange business cards so that you can have the contact details. 
of the colleague or business associate. Okay, these are different ways of asking for a business card. Business card, you must give me your business card. Give me your business card. Do you have a business card? You wouldn't happen to have a business card, would you? It is of the utmost importance that business cards are exchanged between us. Okay, so which ones do you think would not be suitable? You can just type down the number in the chat box. Which ones do you think may not be suitable, a suitable way to ask someone for their business card? Okay. Okay, I'll get stated number six. Okay, it is of the utmost importance that business cards are exchanged between us. Yes, that's extremely formal and it could even be a little bit strong. Utmost importance. Okay, it sounds a little bit strong, so it may not be a good way to ask for business card. Um, number two and three also are not very friendly ways. Number two, you must give me your business card is a little bit very strong and direct. It's like an order or command. And number three, also give me your business card is not very polite. Okay, so you want to be polite with people. Um, it's important to, to show some politeness, especially with business associates and colleagues. Okay, now here are some possible answers to the questions number one to six. Okay, there are different answers, but we can try to match them together. So we have, I would indeed, here it is. Okay, any question that you see that would be suitable for that answer? I would indeed, here it is. Okay, number five, excellent, um, because we're using a number five question, wouldn't. You wouldn't happen to have a business card, would you? Okay, so we can respond with the answer, I would indeed, here it is, okay. B, excuse me, I'd rather not. Okay. Any question that could go along with this one? Excuse me, I'd rather not. Okay. Well, in this one, we could have different answers. Here I see a possibility. Number four, do you have a business card? Okay, so that could be a suitable answer. Excuse me, I'd rather not. Okay. We can also use it together with numbers two and three. But as I said before, two and three are a little bit strong. Okay, I don't seem to have any with me. Must go. Bye. Okay, right, good. Oh, good. Number two, you must give me your business card. It's a little bit strong, so the answer could be strong. I don't seem to have any with me. Must go. Bye. Okay, that's excellent. Yes, I do. Here it is. Have you got yours? Yes, I do. Okay, we can see the answer do. Okay, this one, the answer is yes, I do. So it goes together. That's very good, Olga. Or do you have a business card? Okay, that goes together. Um, and E, that's rather unfortunate as cutbacks have resulted in the non-renewal of cards for all but the most senior staff.
Okay, that could be number six. Very good. Okay. It's a bit of a strong and direct approach to ask the question in number six. Extremely formal. So you can see the answer is also very formal. Okay, number six question is formal and also the answer. And finally, sure, here it is. Very informal way, sure, here it is. Short answer and informal. Yes, very good business card, number one. Okay, so if you take a look at this, you can see that this demonstrates that the language you choose to use depends on the context. Okay, if you have a formal situation, usually with people who are of a higher status, you're going to have longer sentences with more complex grammar. And if you have an informal situation, you tend to have shorter sentences with more slang expressions or easier grammatical forms. Okay, so that's very good. Now we're going to finally go on to requesting, accepting, and refusing. Okay, another important part of networking or socializing is invitations. And here are some simple informal invitations to ask somebody to go to a restaurant for a meal or to go for a drink. Okay, we can say fancy a drink. Okay, this is an expression commonly used in England and it's a British English expression, fancy a drink. So it means, would you like a drink? Okay, it's very friendly in the formal way to say, would you like? Are you up for a drink? Okay, do you feel like a local restaurant? Okay, and we also can make informal invitations using the gerund form in. We often use the gerund um, in informal situations to ask if someone wants to do something. Fancy going for a drink? Are you up for having our meeting in the pub? Do you feel like trying a local restaurant? Okay. And then there are different ways to refuse an invitation. I'd rather not, but thanks anyway. Okay, we can see I'd rather. I'd rather means I would rather. I'm a bit busy, to be honest. No thanks if it's all the same to you. Okay, and finally, when you want to accept an invitation. I'd love one. I'd love to. That'd be great. Okay, we use that'd, and that means that would be great. We use a contraction form. And that sounds lovely. That sounds lovely. That sounds great. Okay, so you see we can use different expressions for inviting, for refusing, and for accepting. Okay, and there are a variety of different expressions and ways to do that. Okay, now we spoke before about the guest and the host. Okay, the host is the person who is receiving the visitor and the guest is going to be the visitor. Okay, so here we have different situations and we have to decide if it is the guest or host or could be both. Okay, so could these expressions be said by the guest, host or both? Okay, let's take a look. Let's do this again soon. Let's do this again soon. Okay. Well, this actually would be, would be both. The guest could say this as well as the host. Okay, so let's go through some other ones. Well, it's getting late. I'd better be going. I'd better get going. It's getting late, I'd better get going. So which do you think this would be? A guest or a host? Or both? You can just put that in the chat box. You can put G or H. Okay, well, let me run through them with you. It's getting late, I'd better get going. It's going to be the guest because the guest has to go, okay? So that would be a, a comment made by the guest. Come back soon. Come back soon. This would be the host. The host is inviting to come back soon. 
I'm afraid I have to go. I have a big day tomorrow. Okay, that would be the guest. I'm afraid I have to go. I have to leave. I'd better be off. I have to get up early tomorrow. I'd better be off also means I'd better go. So that would be the guest. Glad you could come. This would be the host. Glad or happy you could come. We have to do this again sometime. We have to do this again sometime. This could be said by both, both the guest and the host. I'd better get going. It's an early flight. Okay. This would also, again, be the guest. The guest has to leave. We have to do this more often. Okay. This could be um, both. Right. Olga, very good. We have to do this more often. Okay, I had a great time. Thanks. I had a great time. Thanks. Okay, this would be the guest. Yes, very good. Because the guest has to thank the host for the invitation. Well, time to go. This is quite informal. Okay, in this case, it's the guest because the guest has to go. Time to hit the road. This is a very common expression that we use. It's quite informal, but it's an idiomatic expression. And we often use this. Time to hit the road. That means time to go. I have to go. Okay, I have to leave. That would be the guest. It's been our pleasure to have you here. Okay, which one would this one be? It's been a, our pleasure to have you here. Okay, very good, Olga. That's the host. Okay, the host is expressing pleasure at having the guest for the visitor come. It's been a delightful visit. This is also formal. It's been a delightful visit. Okay. It's been a delightful visit. This would be formal and it would be the guest, okay, because the guest has made the visit, okay. Thank you for coming, okay. Of course, this would be the host. The host is thanking for coming. Thanks for dropping by. Dropping by is another way to say coming, okay. It's very informal. We use it a lot when we're speaking. Thanks for dropping by. And thanks for having me over. This is another way, informal way of saying thanks for coming. Okay, so as you can see, we use a lot of informal language in spoken English. And it's important when socializing and networking with clients and colleagues and business associates to keep the conversation going, okay, to make the conversation as natural as possible, to have some small talk, and also to invite and reject or accept invitations, okay? And it's important to learn these expressions because this can help you in the next time when you have to meet some new clients or greet new visitors coming to your company or to your country, okay? So you will be getting, uh, thank you for coming today. And this was our uh, webinar on socializing and the second part of the socializing webinar will be next week. Okay, so thank you very much for coming and thank you for participating. Okay, I hope you enjoyed today's webinar. And I just want to review now any information that you may have. So if you would like to know the webinar schedule, okay, or any information about our private classes and small group classes, you can visit our website. Okay, you can see here, www.humanenglish.com. Okay, and if you have any questions regarding the slides or regarding PDF file, you can also write us at this email, support at humanenglish.com. Okay, so if you look at the website, you will be able to see the PDF files, which will contain some of the language and the vocabulary from the webinar, as well as some of the answers to the questions. And this is very useful for you to help you to continue to review and study. Okay, well, thank you for coming.
to today's webinar. I look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Okay, we'll continue the next socializing webinar next week. And again, if you have any questions or you would like any information about um, slides or PDF files or anything, you can visit our website or write us at this email.